Welcome back to the Common Application. Let's complete our application to Linfield University. Before I log into my Common App account to do that, I want to point out that I have gathered all of the materials and information that I know I'm going to need to complete this part of the application. And that includes, for example, making sure that I know what the short answer questions are for Linfield, that I've written my responses, so that all I need to do when I get to that section is copy and paste them into the application form itself. So I've gathered my materials, I'm prepared, ready to log in, let's do it. And the first page that I'm going to come to is my dashboard. And that has a list of all of the colleges and universities that I'm planning to apply to using the Common Application. And also the status of where I'm at with that application. And so all of them I'm still working on. And so I'll scroll down to Linfield and choose Show More Details, which will show me some more details about where I'm at in this process. And it tells me, this green check mark and the word complete tells me that the common application, though that part that all of the colleges want to have the information for, I'm done with. I just have additional things specifically for common app, uh, for Linfield that I need to complete. And the first of those is some questions. So when I click on this, it will take me directly to those questions. And just as before, there's a menu of headers of different things that Linfield wants to know about. Now these are questions being asked by Linfield and these answers are only going back to Linfield. It is the case that many of these questions are going to look similar or maybe even identical to some of the questions that other colleges have asked in their supplement, but I need to answer them now because these questions are only, the, the answers to these questions are only going back to Linfield. And so let's go ahead and get started. Just as before, there are some questions that are going to be required, and that's indicated by a red asterisk or star. If there isn't that star, then the question is optional, and I may or may not want to answer it, and we'll talk about those as we get to them. So the first question is, when do I plan to start? And I, as you know, am expecting to graduate in the spring of 2021 and start in the fall immediately following that and I need to choose how I am applying to the college, whether through early action or regular decision. Now, as I'm deciding which of these I want to choose, handily, Linfield tells me a little bit about each of these. It lets me know that early action is an early deadline that is not restrictive and not binding, meaning I will submit my application early, they'll read my application early, they'll let me know what the decision is, but I will still have time to make my decision about whether or not I want to attend and I'll, I won't have to make that decision until the spring. Regular decision, slightly later application deadline. I'll submit my application, they'll review it and let me know and I'll have the same deadline to make my decision um, as with early action. I'm going to choose regular decision, but you may be choosing early action, either is fine. I do intend to apply for need-based financial aid. So for example, I will be submitting my FAFSA or ORSA, and so I'm going to go ahead and click yes here so they know to be on the lookout for that. And then they're wondering if there are any other options that they offer for financial aid that I'm interested in pursuing. So let's take a look at what those are. And they have a scholarship and visit weekend and uh, if I'm interested in that, I should click on that. They also have some other scholarship options, um, and I should take a look through those and see whether or not these are things that I qualify for. Um, and if you know that they do, then you'll go ahead and click on them for you. And I'm going to say none for these, but you may choose others if they make sense for you. We'll click continue. Okay, so then we come to academics and they're interested in knowing, what do I want to study? What do I want to explore? They make a note that every student enters Linfield without having a declared major. And so I have the opportunity to explore and they're interested in knowing, what do I like? And so I know that I am interested in many things, including, hmm, 
I'm interested in sociology, so we'll choose that. And I get to choose a second one. And as I scroll through, I see I'm going to go back up and choose communications and then continue. Now the activities section, yes, we have already provided information about the activities that we're involved in in high school, but now they're interested in knowing which of the activities that exist at Linfield are of interest for me to participate in in the future. And I have the option to choose up to five of these. And so this is another drop down menu where I can scroll through and see all of the different options. And I know that I've participated in community service in the past and I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to choose that. And then I think I maybe want to choose one other one. And so I will add another activity and scroll through that list again. And I think that I'm interested in multicultural programs, and so I'll choose that. And I could choose three more if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it at two and move on. They're asking whether or not I'm interested in athletics, and I'm not. So I'm going to leave this blank, and I don't have to answer it. There's no red asterisk, so I'm going to leave it blank. But I could choose the sports that I'm interested in playing if I was interested in that there. And click Continue. The contact section is wanting to know about my relationship with Linfield. And I have not previously applied to Linfield, so I will click no. But if I had before, I could say yes, and they would want to know when I submitted that application. And that would allow them to connect all of the applications that I've ever submitted to each other um, so that they have a full picture of all of my relationship with the college. But I haven't, and so I'm going to say no. And next they want to know how I learned about the university. And they are giving me up to 10 different ways that I could have done that. And they want to know which one was most important in my decision to apply. And in this case, these are my choices here. And in this case, I learned about Linfield from a high school counselor. And so I'm going to choose that. That was the most important thing. But I want to choose one more by adding another contact because I also at one point had the option or the opportunity to talk to a current student at Linfield and that was pretty influential for me too. So I'm going to say yes to that and click continue. Now they wanna know a little bit about my family. Now we did already provide some information about our family in the common application, but this section is wanting to know what my family's relationship with Linfield is. And the first question that they're interested in is whether or not my brother or sister is applying to Linfield this year as, at the same time as I am. And for me, the answer is no, but let's look to see what happens if we say yes. And it, a box pops up so that we can provide information about who our sibling is and what their name is so that they can make sure that they are um, just aware of that relationship. But that's not true for me, so I'm going to clear my answer and select no instead. Same thing here, have any of my relatives ever attended? For me, the answer is no, but if I were to click yes, then another question pops up asking about my relationship to that person. Um, and I assume if I click yes, then they're going to ask me who that person is. But the answer for me again was no. And so no, none of my relatives have attended. And so I don't have any additional questions to answer there. The same is true for me with whether or not any of my relatives have ever worked for the university. So my answer is no. If I could click yes, additional questions would pop up that I would then need to answer. So I'm going to say continue. It's going to ask me some additional questions. For example, have I ever lived in another country? And if so, where and when? And the answer for me is no, I haven't. But if I were to choose yes, they're going to ask me some information about where that was and when it was. Okay. But again, for me, the answer is no. And so I don't have those questions to answer. Have I ever traveled to another country? And again, I have the option to choose yes or no. And if I choose yes, 
to have some additional questions and they want to know where I have been. For me, the answer is no, so I will say no, but if the answer for you is yes, go ahead and choose yes and then tell where you've been. Now I have a couple of short answer questions. Now remember, I knew about these, I wrote them already, and all I need to do is copy and paste. And so this is the question about coming into contact with somebody whose beliefs were different from mine. So I'm going to copy, come back, and paste. And then the same is going to be true here. This is the one about a fictional character who is my roommate. And so I'm going to copy, and paste and continue. And now I'm at the recommendations and FERPA page. Now, one of the interesting things about Common App is even though I'm filling out the section for Linfield now, some of this I already needed to do when I was working on other applications before this one. And that information has been merged into my Linfield application. And that includes some important information about FERPA and my recommendation letters. And so I wanna talk about each of those just so that in case you haven't done this yet. Um, FERPA is the Federal Educational Rights and Privacy Act. And this section is basically about how you can give permission to your high school or any other colleges that you've attended to send your academic records and rec recommendation letters to Linfield um, so that they can use them for the purposes of your application. And you need to give permission for that to happen. And so this section is about that. If the first time that you come to this section, you, it will look similar to this and you will have an opportunity to view the release authorization. And let's take a look at that now and explain what's there so that when you do this the first time, you will know what you're looking at. So you'll get some instructions about what you're about to see. It is very important that you read through these and that you take the time to understand them or to ask for help if you are confused about anything. Um, it's going to explain to you some pretty important details, including that at one at some point very soon, you're going to be asked whether or not you waive the right to review your letters of recommendation. So typically, when you ask somebody to write a letter of recommendation for you, they do that and they don't show it to you. And what this question that you're going to be asked is um, asking about is whether or not that's okay with you, that you would never see those recommendation letters or if you want to retain your right to be able to see them. And there's some good advice here about what to decide, how to decide to answer that question. Once you've read these and you understand them, you're going to click this box and press continue and then you'll have the opportunity to, for example, answer that question about recommendation letters, but also check a couple of things to show that you acknowledge and understand them. This first box is about knowing that every school you've ever attended is going to now have the permission to release your records to Linfield. And then the next one is that whatever you choose for these waivers is going to be true for every college or university that you're applying to using the common application. So you can't choose a different answer for each college. And once you submit an application or any of your recommenders submit their letter of recommendation, you can't change your mind about this. So you want to make sure that you're making the decision that you are meaning to make and you check the box to say yes, sign it, date it, save and close, and then you're set and ready to go and you'll never have to do that again. It will be the same for all of the applications that you're completing. Then the recommendation information also comes through, but you always get the chance to choose which recommenders you want for each of your applications. The only exception to that is your counselor. You have one counselor, that's the counselor that you have, and so all of your recommendations are going to be um, 
are going to have your same counselor. So I've already filled this in. I've already asked this person to do that for me and have filled them in. And so my counselor is set and ready to go. And then I have a teacher recommendation. And I've already completed an application where I entered the teacher's information. And so I can just, if I want that same teacher to write my recommendation for Linfield, I can choose that person. So I already entered Connie Smith and I can choose that person here. Now this is showing me that there is one recommendation required, but I have the option to submit up to two. Here, I do want Connie Smith. And so I'm going to assign her this which means that she has now received an email asking her to submit that recommendation on my behalf. If I wanted to invite another teacher, I could by pressing this button, and then I would enter the information about that teacher, their email address, the subject that they teach me, their title, so Mr., Ms., Mrs., Doctor, their first name, their last name, and then I get to decide if I want them to submit that their recommendation to Linfield. And once I do that, I would click invite and Common App would send them an email letting them know that I'd invited them to do that. Okay, um, same thing for any other kind of recommender that might be of interest to me. And then this advisor is somebody who doesn't write a letter of recommendation for me, doesn't submit anything for me, but I want them to have access to my application so that they can provide me with feedback. And if I wanted to do that, I could click on Invite Advisor and it would ask me again for email information so that they would be invited to participate in my application process. Once I've done that, I can click Continue. And now I'm almost ready. I have three steps left. And those three steps include reviewing my application for completeness and correctness, paying my application fee if I have one, and then clicking submit. So let's take a look. So I have the option to take to look at a PDF. This is what my application looks like and I should look at this and review it and I can do it in this small screen but I can also click on this review PDF and it will pull up a larger one for me. Uh, and I wanna look through the whole thing, read it and make sure everything is correct. If it's not, I can close out of here and use the menu to go back to the place that I need to fix, okay? Once I know that it is correct, I can press continue. Oh, but first I need to say, yes, I have reviewed it and click continue. Linfield doesn't charge an application fee, and so I don't need to make a payment. I can just go ahead and click Continue. And then I have a section where I need to agree to a variety of statements. And every time I need to read that statement carefully, and if I agree to it, or when I agree to it, I need to click the box to say yes. Read carefully, click the box. Again, all the way through, read carefully, and click those boxes. And then sign my name, date my application, and click submit. And when I click submit, I have applied to Linfield University and so have you. Congratulations.